Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be turning this insanely beautiful blanket into my dream coat. I picked up this blanket a good five or six months ago now and I've been holding onto it, waiting for the weather to get cooler here in Australia so I could make an amazing coat out of it. And it is finally starting to cool down and is quickly becoming coat weather here, especially in Tasmania where I live. I honestly don't think I've ever been this excited for a sewing project before. It's definitely going to be a very bright and bold coat, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun to make and also just something completely different to anything you would ever be able to buy anywhere. So of course I'm going to be filming the whole process and bring you along while I make this coat and yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So what first inspired me to have a go at making a blanket coat was this beautiful coat here by the brand Steel. When I saw this coat, I decided I wanted to go and see if I could find an old woolen blanket that I could use to have a go at making a coat just like this one for myself. But instead, I found this incredible floral blanket that as soon as I saw it, I knew straight away that I would try and make my dream coat out of it. Ideally, I would like my coat to look a little bit similar to the steel coat. I want it to be quite a long coat with a simple collar. I want it to be fully lined with buttons down the front. And I want to try and add some fancy welt pockets to the front as well. And also maybe some patch pockets like the steel coat too. So in order to achieve everything that I want this coat to have, I plan on melding a few different patterns together. For the majority of the coat, I'm going to be using Simplicity 8797 and we'll change up the collar slightly to make it a little bit more simple and more like the steel coat. And for the welt pockets on the front of the coat, I'm going to be using the template pieces from Butterick 6385. Hopefully by combining the two patterns and making the changes to the collar will result in the coat I have pictured in my mind. For the lining of the coat, I've decided to go with this fun mustard gingham fabric, which I thought just looks so good and matches perfectly with the retro floral blanket. And I just like having a lining that's a little bit unexpected and fun instead of just a boring plain colour because why not? First things first, I went and found all the template pieces I needed from the simplicity pattern and cut them out. For the smaller pieces like the collar, I found it was easier to just trace out my size onto some tracing paper. And then to simplify the collar of the simplicity pattern, I just folded it back slightly, making the facing match exactly the same, which will hopefully result in a similar collar to the steel coat. Now for the part that I have been both super anxious and excited about, cutting into this incredible retro blanket. Because the blanket fabric is very, very thick, it was impossible to pin the template pieces down. So instead, I just weighed them down with whatever I had handy and then carefully cut all the pieces out. I then cut the lining pieces out of the gingham fabric. And now it's finally time to stitch this coat together. I decided to switch out my brand new brother sewing machine and use my older machine for this project just because like I said the fabric is very very thick and I don't want to put my beautiful brand new sewing machine under that much stress straight away. Domestic sewing machines aren't necessarily designed for fabric this thick but here's hoping that my old machine will be able to do the job just fine. I also made sure to attach a heavy duty sewing machine needle to my machine um, to help with the thickness of the fabric. So the first thing I decided to start working on were the welt pockets, mainly because I wasn't 100% sure they were even going to be possible with such thick fabric. But after doing a few tests on some leftover fabric, I managed to get one welt pocket that worked perfectly after two kind of failed attempts. So I figured if I could do it once, I could do it again. 
I did quickly make sure that I had enough leftover fabric just in case it was a massive fail and I needed to cut out another couple of coat front pieces, but I was really hoping it wouldn't come to that because I was super happy with the position of the floral pattern on the front pieces that I'd already cut out. So to start with, I drew a line the same size as the pocket pieces onto the fronts of both coat front pieces with my water erasable pen. I then took the pocket flap pieces and folded them and stitched them in half. To help me figure out how to go about making these welt pockets, I actually used a helpful tutorial by a channel called Sew so Custom, and I'll have a link to the video I used in the description below if you want to see exactly how to make welt pockets like this. But basically, once I had my line drawn, I then lined up the pocket flap along the line and stitched it in place. I then lined up one of the pocket pieces opposite the flap and because my fabric was so thick I made sure to keep a 2cm gap between the two. I then placed one of the pocket linings onto the pocket flap and also stitched that in place. I then snipped along the line in between the two pocket pieces and also cut diagonally towards the pocket pieces just like this. Then once that part was cut I could then tuck the pocket pieces inside which luckily resulted in a super neat welt pocket which I just think looks so professional on a coat and I'm so glad I put the effort in to make them because I think it's going to be so worth it. To finish the pocket, I stitched all the layers together on the inside and then also stitched around the pocket pieces. And my beautiful welt pocket has successfully been stitched in place. I then repeated the whole process for the other side of the coat, which luckily also worked out perfectly. <laughs> and now it's finally time to start putting this coat together, starting by stitching the fronts to the back at the shoulder seams. I then needed to attach the sleeves to the coat and again, because the fabric is so thick, I wasn't able to use pins, so instead I used some sewing clips. Piecing the coat together actually came together really quickly and once the sleeves were attached I then sewed the sides together again using the clips to hold everything together as I sewed. Once that was done, it was time to make a start on the lining, which was honestly a breeze compared to sewing the multiple layers of thick blanket fabric. Once the lining was done, I then stitched the collars to the coat and to the lining. And after what seemed like actually no time at all, it was time to attach the lining to the coat. Starting at the collar edge, I attached the lining to the coat with right sides together.
I then also stitched the lining to the coat along the sides. Putting lining onto a coat is one of those things in sewing that just seems like magic to me. Having a fully lined coat just looks so, so impressive and it's honestly so much easier than it looks to do. When I first started making coats, I assumed that I just didn't have the skills to put a lining in because I just thought you had to be like trained in making tailored clothes or something <laughs> to be able to do it. So instead, I ended up lining coats in the weirdest way, just kind of making it up as I went, which I thought was an easier option. But when I finally decided to line a coat properly, I was so amazed with just how much easier it was than I originally thought. So if you've never lined a coat before, I definitely think you should have a go. Just follow the pattern as it says, and it's actually crazy just how easy it is. Once all the edges of the lining were sewn in place, I then hand stitched the hem up slightly on the inside of the lining as this will make it look pretty much invisible from the outside of the coat. Honestly, it's like magic. I just love it so much. Then it was finally time to turn the coat right side out through a little opening that I made sure to leave at the bottom of the coat. It was definitely a bit of a squeeze getting the thickness of the blanket through the opening, but I eventually got there in the end. I then pulled the arms of the coat and the lining back through the opening and then stitched them together at the ends with right sides together. And I have to say, I'm just loving how good this gingham lining looks against the blanket fabric. Once the sleeves were stitched together, I pulled them back through the opening and once they were turned the right side out, the sleeves were now fully lined as well. Next, I hand stitched the opening closed and then top stitched along the collar and center front edges. I really love adding top stitching to my garments and even though it wasn't really necessary for this project, I don't really feel like a garment's complete until it has a little bit of top stitching on it. I then had the fun task of attempting to stitch the buttonholes onto the coat, which I was a little bit afraid that the fabric was going to be too thick to actually do the buttonholes, but I really wanted them as I want this coat to be able to be buttoned up. So I decided to just have a go anyway. I started by marking out the positions of the buttonholes directly onto the coat with my water erasable pen, and then I manually stitched the buttonholes in place. I tried using my buttonhole foot for my sewing machine, but it really didn't like the thickness of the fabric and didn't work at all. But I found stitching them manually worked perfectly, which was a relief. I then removed the markings and opened up the buttonholes with a seam ripper. And then all that was left to do was hand sew the buttons into position. So how does this finished blanket coat look? I'm honestly so, so happy with how this coat has turned out. My only regret is that I wish I'd made it slightly longer for even more of a statement. I was hoping for a long coat, so I'm not sure what happened there, but it is still so cute nonetheless. I also decided against adding patch pockets to the front of the coat just because the fabric was way too thick to be able to do those. This was such a fun project to work on and honestly, probably my favorite thrift flip so far. It was definitely a challenge at times because the fabric of the blanket is very thick and my poor domestic sewing machine really did struggle once there were a few layers to sew through, but it did such a good job considering and it honestly wasn't that difficult to make this coat at all. Um, I'm so impressed with it, especially the fun gingham lining on the inside. I just love this coat so much. It's 
very bold and bright, but I think it's going to be such a fun piece to wear. And I'm actually looking forward to it getting colder here in Tasmania because I feel like I won't feel the cold anymore at all because this is literally like wrapping a big blanket around me and... Yeah, I'm just so happy with it. And like I said at the start of this video, this coat is literally unlike anything you'd be able to buy anywhere. And it's 100% one of a kind. And I just feel really lucky to have it in my wardrobe. So yeah, hopefully this video has inspired you to go and see if you can find a fun retro blanket to turn into a coat. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.